pairing live stream. This meeting yeah. is being live streamed. Got it. Setting up your meeting for Facebook Live. <gasps> Setting up your meeting for Facebook Live. <laughs> there you are. You might want to mute that. <laughs> we made it. How do I do that? You might want to mute that. Okay, how do I do that? <laughs> how about that? Oh, good. Okay. There's no more, there's no more echo. There's like, we're set. Oh my yeah. gosh. It's so great to see you, my girlfriend. Oh, All yes. right. <laughs> so 817 mm -hmm. here in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, 717 for my sweet friend, Traz. You're the sweetest. I'm so happy to see you. Oh, so so uh, let's start this off. It's the first Woohoo Wednesday in a long, long time. And so for uh, those of you who don't know me, I am Samantha Buckley Hugeson. And I say Hugeson because a lot of people don't know how to pick, pronounce it Huggison, which would be lovely, but it's Hugeson. I am a master life coach for women in business and the host of the Women in Business Networking Community. So when you join, you get to see my my big welcome post. <laughs> it is Woohoo Wednesday. So here in the Women in Business Networking Community, uh, this is your day to boast, to brag and to shine, or what I mean by that is to market your business. You know, we only allow marketing upon introduction and on Wednesdays, so it doesn't get all spammy and gross. So today, and every Wednesday is your day. Uh, the rest of the week is dedicated to motivation, mindset, some um, maybe turning some challenges into opportunities, networking and connecting, and sometimes just being in a safe place to ask and be yeah. with other women in business when we're going through the stuff of life. But for now, uh, until the top of the hour, we're going to be spotlighting a fellow woman in business, sister, amiga, to lead, inspire, teach, and grow you. So without any further ado, this morning, we're welcoming my friend, Trez Ibrahim. She's a best-selling author, international speaker, a thought leader, evolutionary strategist, master success coach, and spiritual catalyst trained in neuroscience, psychology, emotional release, energy, business organizational development. She has been working with some of the most prominent business owners, executives, entrepreneurs, and organizations in the world for over 35 years to help them reach massive levels of success so Trez hi so excited to be here and oh. you're in my favorite place Cabo I love it I love I it I know it's such <laughs> a great place I'm already so hot this morning the good news is we're all women so many of us understand what the oh. hot flashes are <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> and um oh when are you coming down to see me again I mean come well, next time you're down will you call me Absolutely. Absolutely. I will <laughs> go get some tea or wine or mm -hmm. tequila. Or I don't know. <laughs> anyway, good morning, sister. So um, I'm just so honored. I just saw that you were, um, this is, you know, I'm going to throw something. I just saw that you were honored by the Filipino society. Tell me what that was. I just, that's like, you're amazing. You're everywhere. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, so FACCOC is an organization in Orange County. They're very active in the business community. Um, I actually ran their entrepreneur boot camp and um, they're they're really making a, a big impact in business owners and, and helping them from the starting scaling to section planning stages of their business. So pretty incredible. And yeah, they they um, honored me with the impact award. So I'm very, very humbled, um, very excited uh, to be part of a great organization. Um, and it was so cool, just like this glass little award, which doesn't show great in pictures because I was wearing a white dress at the gala. <laughs> so I'm wearing it doesn't look like you. you yeah, are now. So oh. yeah, so I was very, very honored for, to receive well, that. <laughs> Thank you. From what I know of you, it's obviously well-deserved too. Thank so. you. Um, I <clears throat> kind of feel, so we're off scripty here. You know, mm -hmm. this is just kind of going for it. 
I think the thing that I want to start with for everybody listening and who's going to watch the replay and whatever is to understand the purpose of what we're doing here this morning. So we're all women in business or we identify as women. So we are very open. And the thing is, is that as you know, I live in Cabo, I love living down here. I don't want to have to get up and go on planes and go attend in-person networking events and things like that. So the goal is not that they're, they're amazing. Mm -hmm. And when I'm in the States, I do attend, but the goal of this is, is that many of us women here in this group are entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, um, leaders, you know, and we don't have the time, nor do we really want to go cross town or get on planes to have to go to these networking events. So the design of this whole, this whole Facebook group that I created, and I just started it last February, and we're just under 700 members. So at, clearly there's a lot of us that feel the same. We want to come together and learn and grow and network and market. And the, the group's not about one person selling their shit. <laughs> it's really about all of us supporting and guiding networking growing. So on that, tell me about your book. Tell us oh, the God. name of it and tell us about <laughs> it. And then I want to learn more about what you can offer my beautiful girlfriends here in the group. So go. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you my brainchild my my passion project the modern woman discover your inner sweet sexy badass queen and and the crazy thing samantha is i started writing this in my 20s so it's it's been a while um and i think women are really ready to hear what what this book shares in here you know because i'll i'll tell you most successful women have a string of failed marriages so i have one it's yeah, you know, it's it's and young women now feel like they have to choose between career and family. And my message is really that you can have be and do it all. But nobody's ever told us how. You know, I, I was a daughter of the whole feminist movement. It's like, cool, we can have equal rights with men, but we never got equal rights. We got all the work that men do. And by the way, oh, you still have to, you know, cook and clean and take care of the kids and take care of the family and do the laundry and all that other stuff. Um, and so we, we, we kind of gotten a little backwards, a little extreme. So um, this, this book to me um, was, was almost a, a Bible for myself <laughs> and the concepts in the book have really helped my clients, especially the, the successful women who um, are just getting burned out, depleted, exhausted. Right? from trying right. to trying to do it all themselves. So I do say you can happy and do it all, but there's 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 a way to do that elegantly. So you can go to sleep feeling rejuvenated, excited, happy about life and wake up with a with a skip in your step. Okay, say out loud for the people that are driving in their car listening to this. Say the name of the book again out loud. Absolutely. It's The Modern Woman. Discover your inner sweet, sexy, badass queen. <laughs> that, you know, everything you just described there, that's us. That's, that yes. is the, literally the reason that I created this Women in Business Network and Community. This was my jam behind what you just said. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, I'm a life coach for women in business. So yeah. I'm the confidant. I'm not the employee. I'm not the business partner. I'm not the spouse. I'm not the girlfriend. I'm not the mom. I'm the only person probably <laughs> that can support you in every channel, right? While you're doing this and be safe. So what you're talking about is you're speaking exactly, exactly to our, um, what, what are they called? Archetype? Audience. No, audience, you're yes. high. target market, <laughs> target market. Yes. You, you just described us. So mm -hmm. What a perfect, perfect person to have on this morning. I'm so, all right. So what, what do you want to share with us to lift us or guide us or uh, what tools do you got for us today, sis? Let's go. Absolutely. So I think one thing that will really shift the way you perceive your life and really help women make decisions is understanding those four feminine archetypes. 
And that's what I do with my, with my clients is I help them really embody them so they could kind of maneuver, dance around each of them in each situation in their life. So archetypes, and, and I know you're familiar with archetypes, they're basically qualities that are inherent in all of us. There are things that we have access to if we choose to. Some of us are um, more adept at, at certain qualities or characteristics, and some you know, don't really practice certain ways of being. And so when I talk about the sweet, sexy, badass queen, those are four feminine archetypes. Oh, and I thought, so I thought sweet, we just all of us are all of those. Are we all are all of them. them. Okay, good. We okay. are all of them. And there are times where we need to be sweet and there are times where we need to be a badass, right? There's times where we need to be sexy and there's times where, oh no, I'm I'm going to step back and 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 set my boundaries. So with 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 the sweet, sexy, badass queen. So the sweet is the mother. Now the mother is that that stereotypical mother. She's very nurturing. She's very loving. She's very giving. Um, she anticipates people's needs. She knows what you need even before you do. And she's very connected to people. So she's the one that is intuitively connected to the child, to the husband, to her community, to her family. She she knows what you need before you need it. She's so in tune. And it's such a beautiful, you know, and she's the one that, you know, again, cooks and cleans and just loves to take care of people, loves to make people feel good. And you can see how beautiful that is, but you can also see the danger in it because she's so in tune with other people's needs. She loses touch with her own. We know mothers who are like that, right? Uh, you know, women who, who, women who've given their life to their family. And then once the children are out of the house or once the, the husband suddenly wants a divorce, she doesn't even know who she is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She spent the last 30 years focused on everybody else that she's lost herself. She's also the martyr the one that gets taken advantage of, the one that just gets depleted and exhausted at the end of the day. So being a mother is very beautiful. I mean, that's our inherent nature. We want to take care of people, but it has to be balanced. And so, and, and I use that word lightly. I don't believe in balance and I'll clarify that in a little bit. I don't Me believe either. So good, yeah, okay. <laughs> yes. good. Um, but it has to be offset. Um, so the second one is the, is the sexy. She's the playmate. Now that's the little girl. Like we we love dressing up. I mean, as little, you know, three years old, I'm wearing my mom's lipstick and high heels. I mean, we were just that that's our nature, right? As women. We love dressing up. We love feeling beautiful. We love feeling sexy. We love laughing out loud, having fun, being flirtatious. So the sexy is the playmate. She's the one that is, you know, joie de vivre. She's in the moment. She loves beautiful things and she creates an incredible environment for herself. She, she flirts with everybody. She's playful. She's, you know, she's again, just that vivacious part of her. And again, she's sexy. She's, you know, she loves sex. I mean, so, so many women get married and all of a sudden the sex goes by the wayside because she's so focused on work or focused on the kids. She's exhausted. She doesn't really take the time to luxuriate in her body and, and express herself in those ways. And so um, too much of the playmate makes her a little bit of flaky, okay. <laughs> um, a little airy. Um, also, she can be promiscuous um, because she's, again, you know, so, so, um, she maybe dresses very sexy. And, and I have a rule about dressing sexy without being promiscuous. Um, oh, what's the rule? Yeah. <laughs> so it's the rule of two. So when you're dressing, there, there's certain body parts um, that a woman has that very, again, sexy, beautiful. And so my rule is you can only expose two at a time. So we're talking arms and shoulders, back, legs, and cleavage. Okay. So to be sexy, but in good taste is where you could show two of them, but you don't want it. You want, you don't want it all out there for everybody to view. So it's either, you know, cleavage and back or, you know, show your legs and arms, but have your chest covered. So it's choose two. But when women, and, you, and you'll notice that when women have, say they're wearing really short dress, so they're showing their legs, they're showing their cleavage and they're showing their arms. It looks a little tacky, dare I say? Yeah, a little too much. That. You can say that. Absolutely, a little too much. 
So, um, you know, or a woman who shows her curve, she shows her body without showing skin. That's very sexy. You know, I agree. Yeah, I agree. So those are so great much- points. And I'm just mm-hmm. checking, making sure I'm good. I'm wearing shorts and my arms are exposed. But my- and, I, and I think we do it intuitively. We we don't want too much covered up. It just feels off if, if we're if we're honest with ourselves or if we're used to being a little more um, conservative. Perfect. Love it. Love it. Okay. So now too much of the playmate again makes her promiscuous. And I'll tell you, women who are very mother and playmate combination tend to be taken advantage of. They're the women that get used and abused by men. They're the women, the young girls that start to uh, be sexually active at a young age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, And it's a really attractive combination for men because she's giving she wants to please you she's nurturing she's got that mother quality which men love and she's sexy what an incredible combination let me take her in let me use her and then dump her unfortunately that's that's where women um find themselves in a in a an unfortunate situation Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well that's offset by the badass that's the ceo now whereas the the mother says yes She's giving. She always says yes. The CEO says no. She's the one that sets the boundaries. She's the one that says enough's enough. She's the one that tells the mother, okay, you give in to this person too much. Now, now it's 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 um imbalanced. It's unbalanced. Um, they're using you now. Mm-hmm. You're mm-hmm. Getting mistreated now. So the CEO comes in and says, Boundaries. Oh, not on my watch. Exactly. Boundaries. She's the one that for the playmate allows her to be sexy. But if someone crosses the line, she says, oh, no, you know, you need to leave or I'm going to leave. Um, she's the one that runs the business. She's responsible for money. So if a woman finds that she's not able to make or keep money, that CEO badass is out of balance. Um, she's the one that sets goals, does what she says, says what she does. She's very organized very succinct. She owns her calendar, owns her time. Um, she she can run a household. She can run a company. She can run the world. <laughs> so that's the, that's the badass part of her. She's very strong, very powerful. She's direct with her words and she's direct with her boundaries. Meaning I just had a, actually another interview. He's like, well, how do you set boundaries? And I said, you don't give warnings. There's an immediate action or immediate consequence. Mm-hmm. Warnings is just hot air. You know, I love, I I love that. I, I did an interview with some men Mm -hmm. last year and it's funny because I was talking about boundaries. And one of the things I said was a lot of people overschedule their time Mm. and, and maybe that's that sweet, you know, the mother that says, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. Sure. I'll jump in. And one of the tools that I give people and, and I'm sure you use it is, oh, I'd love to, let me check my calendar Mm -hmm. or get ready for it. Oh, I can't. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to, and, and this guy was blown away. What, what, what do you mean? You could just say, I can't, it's a guy. (laughs) And I'm like, no is an appropriate answer. Yeah. I'd love to, but I can't. Why? Because I choose not to, or, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm busy or. I can't. I, I, it, no, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Anyway, just wanted to say that yeah. as it just nip it the bud right there. Anyway, go ahead. And I'll tell you, men have no problem saying no, and they don't need to qualify it. Now, the mother in us wants to qualify it, and that's okay. That makes us sweet, you know, and kind of takes the edge off of the no. But men have no problem saying no. These we, guys had a problem one. because they had they had CEO type women in their life and they're like oh, oh, my, yeah. my sister you don't know my sister and I go up oh, bring her on <laughs> right right you know and and unfortunately that's that's the balance that's off in society today is mm-hmm. that women are forced to be strong and so we're kind of weakening the men but that's a whole other conversation that that's um, been going on for decades yes yes and then so, and so- then we pick them mm-hmm and then we get mad mm-hmm. yes. because we picked them and then we walk all over them and then, yeah, not me. I've been married 24 years and I absolutely adore my husband, but I watch it happen day after day, time after time. It's like, you picked them. Mm-hmm. They were like this when you married them. Yeah. Don't get resentful and mad. You picked them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Unfortunately, you know, with, with our, the pendulum swing, 
going towards really strong uh, women is yes, oh. we, we pick the, the weak men. And yeah. again, it's not, it's not strong or weak, but it's, it's more the alpha and the beta because we have to have the polarity. And right. so women do get resentful. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. The successful women, they're like, why am I carrying the full load? You picked uh, it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. So, so playing with these archetypes and, and re, um, organizing your life and making those adjustments and starting to step more into the feminine part of these archetypes really does help um, adjust the balance and calls that hero within the man to step up. So there is a way to, sh to transform and shift a relationship. Oh, hear that, that all the time. Mm -hmm. Hear that girls. I'm yeah. telling you, most of the women I work with are high achieving mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's not unusual for that dynamic in their partnerships. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to put a pin right there in what you said. Yes. Yay. Okay. Absolutely. And that's in the book that I tell women how to do that, how to call right. out the hero and the man and, and stop taking charge and stop. You know, it's like you could run your, you run your business when you're out in business, when you come home, let him serve you, let him take care of you, let him, you know, um, honor you and, and be that protector and that provider. Um, so Yes, yeah. it feels really good, just so you know, girls, if you're not doing that, it feels amazing. Um, okay, so we have sweet, sexy, badass, and? Yes, so the last one's a queen. That's the high priestess. This is the spiritual part of a woman. This is the woman that's connected to her core, something greater than herself. She can call it God, the universe, whatever it is, but it's something that that is greater than her that she's connected to that makes her feel powerful, but, but powerful in a really strong grounded way versus the power of the CEO badasses in doing and controlling the external environment. The power in the high priestess is just, she just knows who she is. She's a woman that walks in the door and lights up the room and she doesn't have to say a word. She's, 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 um, very grounded and rooted. You know, if you think of the queen, the queen walks in and she's powerful. She doesn't have to tell everyone, I'm the queen, listen to me. She doesn't have to do anything. She walks in just by her birthright. She's the, the, the daughter of the king or she married the king because of who she is just by her birthright or just by the marriage. She, she's exalted with this title. And so there's a knowingness about her power that she constantly lives her life with. So it makes her a lady. It makes her uh, live according to her values. It makes a woman in, um, integrous. She's the one that has high standards, high expectations. She uh, never gossips. She's very soft in a, not in a, in a, um, you know, squishy way. <laughs> It's not no, a word. Push over kind of way. The mother might be soft word. and squishy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> she's um she's soft in that she doesn't have to again exert that force. And so um she she's moves slowly, she speaks slowly, she's very deliberate with her words. She doesn't waste air, hot air. Um, she again, she doesn't gossip, she speaks highly of everyone. She holds people to high standards, not by forcing, but by seeing the greatness in them as well. Mm -hmm. She's the one that has manners. She's the one that keeps the others in check. She keeps the sexy, you know, playmate, um, uh, gives her class. So she's the classy part of, of a woman. And um, so the dance of all of these, these archetypes, now two of them are ma masculine in nature, two of them are feminine in nature, because I believe we all have masculine and feminine within each of us. And again, it's, and the, and the way I define masculine feminine energies is feminine is very much internal, masculine is very external. So where's my focus? Is it on me inside or is it on the external environment? So the, the mother and the queen are both feminine because a mother is connected to her heart. She's connected to her intuition. She's, she's connected to people in a loving, giving way. Um, the queen obviously is connected to her core, to, to the part of her that's greater than her. The playmate is very externally focused. How am I dressing? How am I talking to people? How am I, you know, enjoying this roller coaster ride of life and dancing and playing? And the CEO obviously is doing things outside of herself. So those are, those are masculine in nature. 
And the way I see it, you know, again, this whole balance in relationships that has just gotten so off kilter because powerful women will um, tend to attract the weak men that, that think, oh, great, she could take care of me. And then we we were angry and resentful that why won't they carry their weight? Um, I believe that women should be kind of 80% feminine and maybe 20% masculine energies and men would be the opposite. 80% masculine, 20%, you know, feminine, because if we're constantly out there changing the world and making things happen and telling everyone what to do, it's exhausting. And mm. it doesn't work in our bodies. It doesn't work in our bodies. What do you mean? It doesn't work in our bodies. It, it creates illness and disease and, and exhaustion and, and all kinds of um, symptoms and, and issues. Um, and the same thing with men when they, when they're not, you know, I mean, even just simply look at um, uh, our hormones, it throws our hormones off. Um, same thing with men is if they're too much in their feminine, it also doesn't work in their bodies. Um, they're not only is there, are their hormones off, but it does um, result in issues physically. Mm -hmm. yeah. they, they have to be out there slaying dragons. Men are not designed to sit at home and have someone, you know, pay the bills and they could just sit and do nothing. They're not designed. To, it's going to cause depression. It's going to cause, yeah. you know, other, uh, other mental illnesses, um, and lowers their testosterone. It's they, they lose their libido. I mean, all kinds of things happen. So I'm going to, I, I want to grab that. Isn't that interesting? This little piece right here. Cause I, I am fascinated with everything you talked about. Now I can't wait to get your book and give it to everybody for Christmas, right? It's going to be awesome. Oh, thank you. But, but when we talk about, uh, it, it, forgive me for not finding great words. I'm just going to speak what I think is, uh, allowing men to not stand in their power or not be responsible or not do their, you know, dragon slaying mm -hmm. we don't have to send them out into the wilderness every day but <laughs> that we're actually not doing them favors because they're out of alignment with their core mm -hmm. if that's what it's that's what i'm hearing they're out of alignment therefore they get depressed they get uh you know maybe resentful or they forget the line within them mm -hmm. Is this what you're saying because that's absolutely how I'm absolutely and, and women lose respect for them and they feel that and, well, and then they, yeah. they go off and cheat or they go off and, you know, it's absolutely. Or, and the women don't want to have sex with them and all that kind of stuff, because yeah. it's like, I, you know, what most of our sex drive is starts here. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the women don't want to have sex with, or the men don't have, want to have sex with women because now the women is more of their mother because she's taking care of him. So who wants to have sex with their mother? The men stop having sex with their, with their spouse um, in those dynamics. Mm -hmm. boom no that's just so incredible mm -hmm. okay I didn't mean to interrupt you but that was wow I know I'm looking at Rebecca's like holy whoa I'm reading some notes uh <laughs> comments this yes this yes this is, so, this is so there are certain things that we have to catch ourselves doing you know I'll tell you I mean I I've uh, I've been single for most of my life I guess yeah probably most of my life um and I'm very adept at taking care of myself and a very efficient and very, you know, you can call it in my words, successful. Mm -hmm. um, and I get the job done and I have to catch myself with men um, about not telling them the best way to do things. <laughs> Cause in my first marriage, Oh, I, I had no qualms about telling him how to do things. Right. Me too. It was more efficient, giving him driving directions, you know, and, and I remember I was dating this one guy and he was so sweet because he was putting away dishes and he was doing them wrong because there's a right way and a wrong way. <laughs> and I had to catch myself because I'm like, Trez, if you tell him how to do the dishes, that's going to be the last time he puts the dishes away. So I just kept my mouth shut and let him take care of me. And okay. he did. And he kept doing it. And so um, we have to, we have, as if we're strong women, we have to catch ourselves. You know, I, I have a son and, and I purposely raised him with these concepts because I didn't want him to be a man child. I wanted him to grow up to be, you know, a, a, a masculine man. And he's such an incredible young man. He's, he's 27 right now. So I, I hope I did a good job. Um, but I had to remember growing up not to not to castrate him, not to put him down, not to be overly mothering. 
not to tell him how to do things. I would be very, you know, direct. I mean, he had to follow my rules and I gave him space to do things how he wanted to do them. I didn't nag. So there are certain things that we do to emasculate men. And there are things that we do to, to call them up as our hero. Mm -hmm. It it's interesting. Cause I think that again, women in business, we're leaders, you know, if we're leading a, a startup of mm -hmm. uh, MLM mm -hmm. or if we're running a 10, $20 million company, you know, we are drivers for the most part. If we're going to be successful, we're drivers and you have to learn when to tap the brakes mm. and maybe get in the passenger seat. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and when you talk about that, first of all, how smart were you to not say, by the way, I prefer it when you put the dishes away this way, <laughs> because we do. And here's the thing, our spouses or our partners will often call us negs. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. what do you mean I'm nagging? It's just that that's, there's a right thing to do things and there's a way of doing things right. That was it. You're doing that. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, because I'm like that too, because we also, I find many of us are control freaks. I had a, a session yesterday with a relatively new client. I think we're in session six or seven. And she kept referring to controlling, controlling, controlling in, in herself. And I go, why do you do that? Why, why are you doing that? And you want to know the truth? It was, it was to actually tied to money fears. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. security fears. It was, had nothing to do with wanting to control somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, women want nothing more than to let go of control because it's I exhausting. We, we want a man that comes in and says, Hey babe, have a seat. I got this. Yeah, we want nothing more than that. But because we're such, um, we're we're going we're we're designed to take care of the community. If something needs to be done, we're going to do it. Yeah. If nobody else is there to do it, and so that's why I think women do need to call out the men in their life to take on more responsibility, um, because we're responsible for the spiritual energy of our community. We can't do that if we're out there doing slaying dragons, but we're, we're going to slay dragons because we've got an infant that depends on us. That's our inherent nature. And, 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 and the men are gone, right? They're, they're, you know, they're, they're gone. And so while the men are gone, metaphorically, you know, literally, um, we've got to take care of that infant and we got to protect it from the tigers and the dragons and, mm -hmm. you know, every mm -hmm. other danger. And um, so we can't let things go where, and we, we notice everything, you know, I, I also talked to a gentleman and I said, you know, women can't deal with clutter. And he's like, what do you mean? And, um, and I said, clutter is very um, de-energizing. It's very exhausting for women because, and he's like, why? And I said, well, because we're, again, we're designed to take on all the information from our surroundings. When we're alone, when we're in protective mode, when we don't have our security taken care of, we become that security. So we have to take in all this information. Now, if I look around and I've seen mail over on the table and trash piling up and clothes over on the, on the chair and you know all this crud everywhere, it drives us crazy. Exactly, we can't relax. Whereas men will walk in, there's clutter everywhere. They don't even notice it. Why don't they take out the trash? They don't know it's overflowing. We notice it's overflowing. That's just our nature is we take in all the information. So we have to, we're required to clear out the space so that it's not distracting. And again, men don't notice it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't Isn't affect men. And there was actually an experiment where they put these caps on men and women and, um, and, the, and the children, so in the family. And when the woman is stressed, the children pick up those signals and they become stressed. So the women's stress affects the family. When the man is stressed, there's no effect on the children. Okay. So the men are required to take care of the women. It's like happy life, happy wife, happy life. They need to make sure that the woman is taken care of and feeling safe and secure so that she could raise the children. We're not raising children these days because everyone is stressed and the women are just exhausted. They're not nurturing our, our next generation the way we should be. So absolutely the stress of a woman affects the family. She can't, it's not, the men are designed for stress. That, that, that 
energizes them. That builds their testosterone. They can go and slave in more drags. It makes them more powerful. Stress weakens a woman. So, okay. I have more questions to ask you, but now I want to sit and have a cocktail with you like yeah. never before and just totally have this really smart, yummy conversation with you. How are you so on at, you know, 751 Pacific time in the morning? You're amazing. Oh, amazing. thank you. No, it's incredible. It's just like, whew. um, and yes, when you come down next, we're going to make Absolutely. time. We're going to make girlfriend time because <laughs> so smart and wise and mm. just yummy. Um, all right. So we are going to wrap up a little bit more. So what, if you were hoping for a takeaway for this group mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to encourage as people watch this later, cause they're driving to work or whatever, um, that they comment and ask questions and things like that. But if you were looking for, okay, what's a takeaway mm -hmm. that I hope landed, what yeah. would you hope that would be for our listeners? I would say really get to know the four feminine archetypes in yourself and play with them. So it's how, you know, you're in a situation, I need to bring a little more badass here. You know, this guy's walking over, all over me. Or I'm going on a date, it's getting dry. Let me bring a little more of my playmate, you know, to my husband. Let me let me dress mm -hmm. up a little sexy. So it's get to know the four feminine archetypes and play with, you know, let me let me bring a little bit of this, let me bring a little of that. I'm getting a little resentful. Let me let me step into my queen and and um, you know, connect with with a higher part of me. Um, so yeah, that would be the big, that that's really the answer. And, and it is, it is a, a getting to know and, and looking at how do I bring in a little more of this in this situation or that situation at work in my family and dating with my, with my, you know, employees, with my clients. Yes. So, uh, that worked because that's my takeaways, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so boom, <laughs> nailed it. Love it. And and I think that everybody that's listening or will listen is going to go, oh yeah, that's me. Oh, oh wait, that's me. Mm -hmm. Because just you describing to me the sweet, the sexy, the badass, the queen, you know, the mother, the playmate, the CEO, the um high priestess. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, that's me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. don't do enough of that. Oh, I should, I think I could pull in more than that oh and then we think about this from the fact of what I do for a living I you know I'm I'm pretty awake mm -hmm. if that yes. makes sense right <laughs> and I help women design lives they love so I and I don't agree you know we can talk about why we don't agree with balance because balance is like the teeter-totter right when you're a kid mm -hmm. on the playground you stand mm -hmm. in the middle because there's no one else to play with you're just trying to get it right and usually yeah. it's like Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. <laughs> right right yeah. um I always think of you know the the pillars of our life as like cylinders in a car and I know that seems very mm -hmm. masculine but let's not stereotype it we all have common sense if you have a car with four cylinders let's call let's call a sweet sexy badass queen you mm -hmm. know and one is working overtime it's gonna blow Mm -hmm. And then the other three are going to have to pick up the slack and then another one's going to blow. Mm -hmm. exactly. and, and I mean, blow as and blow up, you know, you're yeah. going to have to get the machines, the heads machined and it's not going to be good. So um, you did amazing. Thank you, 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 you like you. the share this morning is insane. Um, so tell us the best place to find you. If someone says, I love Trez as much as Sam, and now I want to find her book, or I want to ask her questions, or I want to find out about working with her. How do they do that? Well, obviously, I'm on all social media, so you can just find my name. But if you want um, to connect with me, Spell what's that? Farm. Spell it. Trez, T-R-E-Z. -E Trez, Ibrahim, I-B-R-A-H-I-M. So you can DM me on any of the social media, um, but I do have a way to connect with me personally. And then you could um, get involved in, I do free coaching um, twice a month in, in our group. Um, and that's www.manifestingsuccessnow.com. Manifestingsuccessnow.com. Um, but yes, you can, you can definitely 
Um, look up my name on any of the social media platforms on Amazon. You can get the book. Um, just type in Trez Ibrahim. Don't type in the typo, title. Of, I found if you type in the modern woman, you'll get 2 million books with the word woman in it. So put my name in, you'll find my book immediately. <laughs> Why did our publishers not tell us that? It's the same thing with my, right. with my book, The Unstuck Yourself, The Guide to Designing a Life You Love. Same thing, type in unstuck and you're going to see 70,000. I'm like, but yeah. the truth is I was inspired to write it because so many people said they were stuck. Yes. So that's yeah. kind of why. What a great um, title. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. So, um, okay. So now I'm going to read our close out because I had to type it to not miss anything. So I'm going to say to all the ladies, thanks for tuning in today. Make sure and hit the get notifications in this group so you don't miss your opportunities to talk and ask questions of our inspiring women in business. And if you're interested in learning more about purposely designing your life, uh, of course, look for my link in the comments today because I'm going to pimp out my book as well. Um, and this has just been incredible. I I'm so grateful that you agreed to get up and spend time and wow, yumminess. I'm so, so grateful for you. Thank you so uh, much for inviting me. This is an absolute pleasure. Love yeah. seeing you. <laughs> Bye, sweetheart. I'll see you soon. Stay in touch, please, please, please.